What's up everybody, Pedro here, and today we're going to brew some beer. The other day I went to get um, the equipment and sanitize it, and I found a kit that I had purchased a while back at a brew store. I decided to go ahead and make that kit. That kit comes with all the ingredients that you need to brew the beer. It's an Imperial Nut Brown. Um, I found this kit also on Amazon.com, and I'll put a link to it down below. I use Star Sand to sanitize all my equipment. I also purchased that on Amazon.com and I'll put a link to it as well down below. So I'm sure it's written somewhere. In order to brew beer, you have to drink beer. So let's go. Okay, here we are in the kitchen. We've already sanitized all of our equipment, including our pot and our thermometer. We've put a uh, minimum two and a half gallons in your pot. Um, you have to have a pretty good sized pot. I'm using an old pressure cooker pot that I had uh, that my mother gave me. So you want to bring this water up to a steeping temperature, which is 150 to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it reaches that temperature, you'll put your grains in this cheesecloth and then you'll tie a loose knot on it and stick it in the pot. We'll show you when it gets to that temperature. Uh, so we'll be back. So our temperature is right at 155, just a little over 155 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put the grains into the uh, cheesecloth and we'll start steeping them. And you need a better pair of scissors. I've got chicken shoes here. I just put it in this measuring cup and spread the cheesecloth out so, uh, gosh, that smells good. I spread it out so it'd be easier to put the grains into the cheesecloth. I might use a knife instead. That's all the grains. This is like a sock. You just want to tie a knot, a loose knot at the top here. Um, and just drop them down into the water. And we'll set a timer for 20 minutes. Let that steep for 20 minutes. And then we'll add some more ingredients. Okay, once your grains have steeped for 20 minutes, you want to pull them out and let it drain. Don't squeeze this. Just let it drain back out into the pot. And now your water is warped. Like I said, you want to turn the temperature up now and you want to bring it to a rolling boil. Once it starts boiling, we're going to add our dry malt and we're going to add our liquid malt. The liquid malt is over here in the sink in some warm water. Uh, it makes it easier to get the malt out of the jar because it's, it's like molasses. It's real thick, it's hard to get out of there. So if you warm it up first, it's a lot easier to get it out of the jar. So anyways, we've raised the temperature on the wart and once it gets to boiling, uh, we'll be back. Okay, so we've got a rolling boil going. We're gonna go ahead and add our dry malt.
My wife thinks this stinks. I love the smell of it. Unfortunately, she's going to be home very soon. She's going to be home in about 10 minutes. So she'll be here just in time to smell it. That's all right, she knows it's going on, so it won't be a complete surprise to her. She's still going to say something, though, I promise. God, this smells so good. I think it does, anyway. Oh, there. Okay, there's the dry malt. Here doesn't smell the greatest, but I've never been a fan of molasses, and that's what it reminds me of. need to add the maltodextrin. I think that's how you say it. Okay, well, as you can see, the uh, wart boiled over. Anyways, I made quite a mess. And right before the wife came home, of course, you know, she's not very happy. So I just added an ounce of Columbus hops. I wrote down the time on my paperwork. Okay, so in 40 minutes, I'll add an uh, ounce of the Williamette hops. 15 minutes after that, I'll add another ounce of the hops. Then we'll let it boil for five minutes, or the wart chiller to it, cool it down and transfer it into a fermenting bucket. Okay, so the um, wart is done. I put the chiller in there as, as just a coil of copper. Now I've attached the hose right here. I've attached the hose to the plastic pipe that goes to the copper. So it goes through the copper, goes through the coil, comes back out right here and that is super hot, right? So the water runs through the coil, the copper coil, and it pulls the heat from the wart and it cools it down. It's called a, a wart chiller. And it cools it down a lot faster than uh, any other method that I know of. Uh, so anyways, once it's down to 70 degrees, I will transfer it to my fermenter bucket, which is right here. And next time I'll be cooking the brew outside. Okay, so I put the wort in the fermenter container and I filled it up to five, just under five gallons because uh, I lost some in the boil. And now I'm going to sprinkle the yeast on top. Whoops. Not on top of the lid. So you sprinkle the, you don't rehydrate these, you sprinkle the yeast on top. <clears throat> like my scissors. And you stir it in real good. Put your lid on tight. Make sure it's locked down good. And then you put your air lock right here. Do that in just a second. Okay, so you take your airlock, 
and there's a there's a line on the airlock that you fill it with water. Some people put vodka in there. Not sure of the reason, but you um, push it down where it seal just where it's real nice and snug in there. It seals it up. What this does is it allows the gases from the wart when it's fermenting to come up through here and through the water without letting air get into the wart. So it's airtight. The, any gases will escape through here, bubble up through the water, and they'll come out. There's little bitty holes in the top of this airlock, and it'll escape that way. Uh, so for the next seven to ten days, it's going to be bubbling. I'll be out of town for the first four days anyway, so I won't be able to show you guys. I'm going to put it in the corner of the kitchen. It's nice and cool in the house, and it's nice and dry. So that's where this baby's going. Okay, so the wort is fermenting. You'll know the wort is done fermenting when the bubbles stop coming. 48 hours after it's done fermenting, uh, we'll begin the bottling process. We should be able to have a video of the bottling process coming up this next week. If you like this video, please hit the like button and uh, share if you're so inclined. Also, consider subscribing to this channel as we're going to be having a lot more videos coming up. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.